the largest number which has ever served any definite purpose in mathematics. This quote is from the famous mathematician G. H. Hardy. The number that he is talking about came to attention in the 1930s. Let's try to understand how this number came about. But more importantly, let's explore just how large this number really is. I'm going to start by explaining how the number arose. Now if things like functions, logarithms and integration scare you, don't worry. You can just let this explanation drift over you for the first part of the video. Then in the second part, you can understand and enjoy just how large this number is. For thousands of years, mathematicians have found prime numbers interesting. Of considerable interest is the prime counting function. This is the number of prime numbers less than or equal to a given number. This is central to the prime number theorem, which is a famous theorem in number theory. Interestingly, we give this counting function the symbol pi x, even though it has nothing to do with the number pi. So pi x is the number of primes less than or equal to x. Again, this has nothing to do with the pi, which is equal to 3.14159, etc. So let's look at an example of pi n. There are four primes that are less than or equal to 10, namely 2, 3, 5 and 7. So pi 10 equals 4. What about pi 100? Well, there are 25 primes less than or equal to 100, and here they are. So pi of 100 equals 25. Here's a graph of pi x. You can see from the blue lines that pi 3000 is about 420. So there are about 420 primes less than 3000. There is no algebraic function for pi n, or pi x. So we are forced to look for an approximation. The famous mathematician Gauss started looking for a good approximation to pi x. He suggested that a function, which we now call lie x, would be a good approximation to pi x. This is what it looks like when we plot lie x divided by pi x. It looks like Gauss has hit the jackpot. And remember, Gauss didn't have computers. Lie x works very well. As x gets larger and larger, the ratio of lie x to pi x seems to get closer and closer to 1. Gauss didn't have a proof that lie x divided by pi x gets closer and closer to 1, but mathematicians have since proven this to be true. Lie x is a very good approximation to pi x. So let's see what the formula for lie x is. Actually, the real formula for lie x is a little bit more complicated, but I didn't want to scare too many people. If integration scares you, then don't worry. You can still understand this story. Remember, once I get to the largest number that has served any definite purpose, the real fun starts as we try to work out how large the number really is. Anyway, lie x is just a function in x. It's just like a factory. You input x, and it outputs a number, which is lie x. You input 10 and it outputs a number of about 6.2. This doesn't sound like a very good approximation since we saw before that pi of 10 equals 4, but it turns out to work amazingly well for large x, and we saw that in the graph. Let's go back to the graph of pi x and lie x. For a while it was thought that the two lines never crossed. That is, lie x is greater than pi x for all x. Then someone proved that they do in fact cross, but no one knew where they crossed. No one knew how high x would have to get to to guarantee that the two lines crossed. Then in 1933, a South African mathematician, Stanley Skews, published a paper in which he gave a conditional proof. He proved that if the Riemann hypothesis is true, then the lines cross for some x is less than 10 to the 10 to the 10 to the 34. So if I could draw a big enough graph with the x-axis going to 10 to the 10 to the 10 to the 34, and if the Riemann hypothesis is true, then the two lines must have crossed. This is the number that Hardy described as the largest number which has ever served any 
definite purpose in mathematics. But just how large is this number? Well, let's see. Let's make sure we understand the idea of raising 10 to the power of something. If we write 10 to the 6, we mean we multiply 10 by itself 6 times. This gives us 1, followed by 6 zeros. This is 1 million. For our number, the largest number which has ever served any definite purpose in mathematics, we start at the top and work our way to the bottom. So we start with 10 to the 34. 1 followed by 34 zeros. Oh, that's quite large. Next, we'll work out 10 to the 10 to the 34. So this is 1 followed by a lot of zeros. How many zeros though? Well, we have the first zero here, so I'll write a little 1 above it. The next zero is the second, so I'll write a 2 above it. The last zero will have a 10 to the 34 above it. Great. Now to finish this off, we only need to do this sort of thing once more. We start with a 1, and then the first zero has a 1 on top of it. It's the first zero. Then the second zero, which has got a 2. What's the last zero? What number do I need to write on top of the last zero? Well, it'll be 10 to the 10 to the 34. So how hard would it be to write out this number? Well, in some ways it's easy, I just did write it. But what would happen if I tried to write this number properly? By that I mean write it out in full, by filling in all the zeros rather than just the first few and the last few. Or let's say I put this number in my computer and press print. How hard would it be to print this number? OK, let's use a bit of physics. Atoms are very small particles, the building blocks of all matter. How many atoms would I need to write the first zero? Some people guess maybe 10 to the 20 atoms. Some people say as few as 100 million. Let's be very conservative. In fact, let's be ridiculously conservative so that we know for sure that we actually require more atoms than I'm going to work out. So let's say that we need not 100 million atoms for a zero, not a million, not a thousand. Let's say we need just one atom for each zero. You simply can't get any more conservative than that. So how many atoms would we need to write this number down using pen and paper, or getting a computer to print it out on paper? Well, there are 10 to the 10 to the 34 zeros that we worked out, so we would need at least 10 to the 10 to the 34 atoms. And I suppose for those that are pedantic, I suppose we could add one atom for the one at the start of the number. So we would need at least 10 to the 10 to the 34 plus 1 atoms. So here's the punchline. Physicists tell us that there are only about 10 to the 80 atoms in the whole universe. I'll say that again. Physicists tell us that there are only about 10 to the 80 atoms in the whole universe. So the largest number which has ever, ever served any definite purpose in mathematics is so big that even if we used every atom in the whole universe for the ink, or to write or print the number, we would run out of ink. There simply aren't enough atoms in the universe to write or print this number. That's big. That's very big. So that's the number that was described as the largest number that has any, ever served any definite purpose in mathematics. I hope you've enjoyed seeing how it arose, but more importantly, just how big it is.